Howdy. Sorry for the late upload, boys. I know it's been a couple months, but life does get busy from time to time, and so does my free time to edit videos and create content for y'all. But in any case, I hope you guys enjoy this video. Feel free to like and subscribe if you still enjoy D1, and check out my Twitch as I stream more D1 content on there. Links will be in the description. But most importantly, thank you for sticking around. So let's get back into the video. Well, Thorn. Remember how overpowered this gun once was back in year one? How infamous it was to just two-tap everyone. And everyone either hated it or loved it. It was no in-between. But nowadays it's become such a mediocre weapon that there's no real reason to use it in this meta, especially with like how many other guns are just better overall. But why is that the case? Why is this gun fallen from grace? Now, before I get into why Thorn is really bad nowadays, let's quickly talk about the time when Thorn first originally came out and look into the history of this gun and, you know, its relevancy to the meta of Crucible in D1. Alright, so when Thorn originally debuted, it originally had 6 in the mag, poor handling and reload, and did 81 to the head while ticking for 3 damage per shot. So needless to say, it did not really stick around in the competitive meta back then because a lot of the good weapons back then were auto rifles, you know, Suros, and th that sort of meta really was just not, hand cannons didn't really stick around that since they didn't do as much damage and didn't kill as fast as auto rifles did back then. However, once this was noted that Thorn was really bad back then and hand cannons and all these other weapons were bad compared to auto rifles, the 1.1 update came out on December 1st, 2014 which reworked a ton of exotics. One of those exotics was Thorn. And for a multitude of reasons, Thorn became one of the most strongest primaries and even the best exotic in Crucible in year one, before it was nerfed in 2015, before Taken King came out. So let's go back and look real quick into what made Thorn so overpowered back then. First was the range of all hand cannons. So back then, hand cannons were practically all-around weapons that could compete with the range of, of pulse rifles and scout rifles even. Thorn, Hawkmoon, and frankly almost every hand cannon back in year one had absurd range and very minimal damage drop-off, which in comparison today, rifle barrel rangefinder IS Lunas and palindromes are considered to be the strongest weapon in today's meta, especially since it in sweats and both in competitive, just regular, everyday crucible. Back in year one, you didn't even have to have range boosting perks to make hand cannons work. That's how much range they had. If you had a rifle barrel, a rangefinder, IS Luna, or palindrome, because they still have the same uh, range stat, guess what? A legendary hand cannon with no range perk had the same amount of range as a hand cannon with those things that I mentioned today, any IS Luna with those perks today. They would have the same amount of range. So just to give a little bit of insight of how blessed we are to, to see that hand cannons are not as overpowered as they were back then. Secondly, Thorn received a multitude of buffs, which included the Mark of the Devourer perk, which was the damage over time perk. The damage was increased from, get this, from 3 damage to 7 damage per shot, which was ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous in the meta back then. Both the reload speed, the magazine sign was, was increased to 9, and ammo and reserves was increased as well since it only had six in the mag, which pretty much meant that it was unusable in PvE. The stability and then weapon handling increased as well, but the main thing that really made this gun separate from any other gun and became the king of Crucible was the damage over time buff. The damage over time perk is what made this gun so overpowered. You were able to two-shot headshot somebody while the tick damage finished every enemy off. The tick damage was buffed obviously again from three to seven which was a huge difference and made the gun so infamously recognized by the d1 community back then that a lot of people really fucking hated this gun including me and it's for especially what it became in year one trials and everyday crucible back in year one there was never a game back in year one where nobody was using thorn everyone was either using thorn or last word there was just no exception there was it was so overpowered back then however as all broken things come to an end, almost a whole year later, so there was a whole year of this of this gun being the most broken gun in the game, in the 2.0 update that came on September 2015, right before the Taken King came out, like a, literally just a week before the Taken King came out, a, bu uh, sorry, a nerf was obviously headed its way. 
So in September 8th, 2015, almost, almost a whole year later, an update that came right before the Taken King DLC came out for the game, Thorn was finally nerfed and hand cannons all around were hit with a really hard nerf. So in the 2.0 update, the hand cannon nerfs consisted of this. Damage fall off distance has been reduced to be closer to the player to limit long range lethality. Just means that damage drop off hits much more harder than it did you know, in uh, any past update for the game. Accuracy while aiming out sights was reduced slightly, making long range snapshotting less reliable. It just means it, this nerf in turn really made hand cannons really shit during Taken King as it kind of really prolonged this one sort of, I'm not gonna say kind of hidden thing, but ghost bullets and hand cannons, I think was caused really by this uh, nerf. And accuracy while firing from the hip is reduced, which only really was a nerf to the last word because as I as stated, year one, last word and thorn were like the kings of the of crucible and last word just, that was just specifically for last word it felt like. Now, thorn specifically reduced the base damage of the damage over time perk by one third, both in PVE and PVP, which just reverted the damage to fucking Two, two damage for per tick, as well as changing uh, changing the damage from 83 to 79 a headshot, which really made this thing terrible. Not as bad as you know the, what some people consider to be the worst gun in the game, but definitely down there. Like it really made the, it was it went from king to a peasant kind of gun, bro. It was really bad. It was not like the worst thing in the world, but it definitely like still kept up with the very shitty hand cannons. There was also one more change that it did receive, which was a buff in a way, because this was the first time that Thorn received this type of effect on the gun. So the, the Thorn damage over time stacks up to five times over multiple shots, which is self-explanatory, you know. Thorn was not able to stack tick damage with multiple bullets hitting an enemy, which, you know, it, was, it made sense. But each bullet ticking for two, now you'll be able to stack with multiple shots connecting to an opponent. And it just did more damage, which, you know, it was cool and I think was the most necessary change for the gun since they nerfed so much about it, especially what, what the broken aspect of the tick damage was. So that now that we talked about its past history and what kind of gun it was in the Crucible, especially back in the day, let's talk about how the gun is today. There was a re-release of the gun in the Rise of Iron DLC before the game stopped receiving patches and all that stuff. Now, to be honest... It's still really bad, like incredibly bad. I think it's one second to the worst hand, like exotic hand cannon in the game, but that's not to say that it's like not usable. So let's talk about the perks because we haven't really gone over what the gun is stat wise and also the perks because we were just going through the background and the history of it because back then the stats really were pretty mediocre, but the perks itself was the reason why the gun became so infamous and recognizable today. So, Thorn comes with final round. Last bullet in the mag does bonus damage. Very self-explanatory. Send it, which just increases the range and accuracy, which this gun desperately needs as there's no other range perk that benefits it. Mark of the Devourers, which is a really hard fucking word to say for some reason, but it's the iconic tick damage perk that the gun is known for. The, this perk has been buffed and nerfed extremely heavily and has caused the gun to be at a very mediocre state in this day and age. So now that we look at the perks, how does this gun stand up to today? And again, it's pretty bad. There are a lot of reasons why this gun sucks now, and here's why. First, the tick damage is the same, so it still ticks for two damage since the last patch of it. However, the biggest thing is that there's an artifact in the game that pretty much makes this gun near damn redundant and terrible. And it is the memory of Silimar, which reduces burn, poison, and tick damage. Just any sort of like damage over time effects in the Crucible. And man, this artifact makes this gun really bad as it reduces the, the fucking tick damage from two to one damage. As if like it didn't, you know, tickle enough as it is. Secondly, the range is not even near enough to compete with other hand cannons. However, I will give it slight credit as the tick damage will remain the same no matter what the distance a bullet from this gun connects to. So no matter what part of the map you hit someone with a bullet from this thing, the tick damage will still be the same. As long as they don't have the memory of Silomar, obviously. And thirdly, this is more of a personal pet peeve of mine. I think that the recoil and the stability of the gun is really bad. 
recoil patterns on hand cannons are not really supposed to be important, but to this gun, it is. Thorn has this weird sort of recoil pattern that makes it difficult to use in Crucible at times. It does not have many ghost bullets compared to, uh, you know, like Hawk Moon or any other exotic hand cannon. So this gun doesn't have as many, you know, sort of hit and miss kind of shots, which is nice. But it definitely can make you lose gunfights, as other weapons can just either use explosive rounds or high caliber rounds, and it can flinch you out of thorn shots because the recoil pattern is just that fucking weird, and it's very difficult to get used to. And even just ranged weapons like auto rifles and pulse rifles can compete against this thing, which is says a lot, especially in this meta. So then, Gabe, tell me, what is the purpose of this gun if all you're talking about is just the bad things about it? Well. There are a couple good things about it. I won't deny that this gun is extremely fun. I've been using this thing a lot more recently in Crucible. But the couple things that are good about it, they're not like amazing, but they're good. So one of the things that I think is pretty good about the gun is that since it does tick, uh, tick damage over time, you're able to stop people from recovering health a little bit longer than other guns do. So no other gun, uh, no other gun in this game technically does tick damage as Thorn does, right? So you're able to fight another person, and any sort of bullet that hits them will tick damage, preventing them from recovering health within the time, you know, the amount of time that it takes for them, depending on which character and what type of uh, recovery they're running on their on their subclasses. So it is very beneficial in that way, where you can prevent people from regening their health. That's a good one. Another thing that I've noticed is that this gun, to me, I never really had to use a sniper with it. So. Compared to the other videos that I made, like First Curse and um, Hawkmoon, this gun to me, you don't really need a sniper, it feels like. I don't, I've had success using this gun using shotties, fusions, maybe not sidearms because I don't really use sidearms in Crucible, but shotties and fusions, I've actually used them in Crucible in combination with Thorn, and it actually has worked out for me. So I'm not going to say it always will come out, you know, if you use it, that means that it's always going to work. I'm just saying that in my experience that it has worked. Another thing that I think is pretty nice about the gun is final round. Final round is actually a big help to this gun compared to what other people might think of it. Especially in gunfights where you're fighting multiple people. And even when you're not fighting multiple people, if you're able to proc final round with the last couple bullets firing at an enemy, it does increase damage while still pertaining that tick damage, so it is really it's really effective in a way. Now, the last thing that I want to talk about this gun is one combination that I found works incredibly well, and it's not just Thorn, but with any other lower fire rate hand cannon as well. And I think hand cannons in general, but it's been pretty forgotten, like, as of recently. So, there are a couple of snipers in this game that are super hard impact, slow fire rate, such as Ex Machina or Event Horizon. And doing some research in the lab, I was able to find out that if you use a uh, a hard-hitting sniper and thorn you can clean up at any point in the map like it doesn't matter where you are you can encooch people from literally any part of the map and it works in my experience and my research doing this sort of testing and stuff I did not realize it until like I just had a thought of it while fucking around and figuring out the mat uh, the meters and, and the distance and damage drop off and stuff, which I thought was really cool. And I think that's something that people should try out with this gun if they are to ever try, obviously, Thorn. And as always, we go ahead into the lab and look into damage drop off and also, you know, how many bullets does it take to kill a Guardian. However, for this gun, since it's uh, affected by Memory of Silimar, I did extensive testing in the lab with a couple of buds who ran Max Armor Titan, a Warlock with Max Recovery, and also the artifact uh, Memory of Silimar. So here are the results of that to show what kind of things you should expect, especially when using this gun against other people that might be using you know, this said artifact.
So now that we went ahead and gone way too into depth and labbed really hard on Thorn and the good and the bad about it, let's look back on everything and think a little bit about what we can take away from this, right? We remember Thorn used to be super overpowered, you know, nerfs, buffs, all that stuff, everything how it is. But what matters more is what how is the gun today, right? We've talked about it. And I'd say the gun is okay. I've said a lot of trash about this gun and how like there's so many problems with it and how it just cannot keep up with a lot of the guns, you know, nowadays, especially with top tier hand cannons like IS Luna, Palindrome, and hell, even other exotic hand cannons as well. So my biggest takeaway from this is to be able to just understand and learn from this, you know what I mean? Not every gun is gonna be good, and that's okay. This gun is fun, and I think that's more important than it is to just, you know, call a gun trash and just never use it, and then just throw it in the vault and never see it again, right? So, to me, it makes it much more fun to make these videos and look back and see what is beneficial about a gun and, you know, what is bad about a gun. And I think if you get Thorn and if you like Thorn, keep using it. It's fun. I understand. But that's not to say that it is the best gun. It definitely is not. It's definitely one of those mid-tier guns that has its perp has its, you know, purpose and fun and in trivial matters and crucible. But overall, it's a great, you know, addition to your collection of exotics that you might have piled up, you know, from playing this game. So let's go ahead and summarize everything we've talked about so far. We've talked about the nerfs, which were from seven damage down to two. We talked about how the tick damage really does make this gun much more terrible. And the artifact has made it much more difficult to use. As well as, obviously, the recoil pattern and its stability is a little bit of a, you know, a tricky thing for newer players to get into. And so, let's talk about the good things that Thorn can do. One is that the tick damage, if you're finding opponents that aren't using Silomars, it can be pretty good. In the event that it won't, uh, it will prevent enemies from regening their health much longer than normal weapons would. Which is a really good benefit that not a lot of people think about, especially nowadays. Regardless of artifact or not, it prevents a, a lot of health regen against enemies that have that artifact. And, you know, enemies that use high recovery, such as Warlocks. Another thing that's really good about Thorn is that you don't really have to force yourself to play a certain style with it in order to do okay. You can be pl you can play passive with it, you can play, you know, super aggressive with it. To me, it's an all-around gun that encompasses, you know, all kinds of players, new or people that have been sweating in this game for God knows how long, including me. So, to be honest, it makes it much more easier and more, I guess viable as an option for people that don't really know much about meta or anything like that i will say obviously there's the recoil pattern issue but again that comes with just personal experience that's just personal bias not everyone's going to experience the same thing that i've experienced with the gun but in the end it's very important to recognize this so with that being said let's go ahead and put a uh, thorn into the tier list because that's something we always have to think about last second. It's always fun to put these things in tier list and look back once I finish making a review of every exotic in the game, seeing what guns I put in what tier list and why. And I think it'd be more beneficial just to both new players and old that just want to come back and see more D1 content too. And with everything that we just looked over and recognized and, you know, reviewed, I would put Thorn in B tier. I think it's a good weapon, not the best, but there are definitely good aspects of it. And, you know, for B tier for Thorn, I think it's very generous because I personally would rate it lower, but I can't deny that there is some benefit and some good aspects of Thorn that you just cannot dodge. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for sticking around to the end. I really do appreciate it. More D1 content coming soon. I'll be coming back to do more. Trust. Life gets busy. It is what it is, but I'll do my best. In any case, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate y'all so much. Please make sure to leave a like and subscribe and check out my Twitch channel as I stream more D1 content on there. And in the end, thank you. Until next time, this is Gabe, signing out. Peace.